So let's start with a discussion about why people abandon their interaction with your company. And this will give you some insights into the emotional reasons why people purchase. So first, customers prefer the competitor, including free options. Now it happens, another company's brand and solution resonates with prospective customers. But if it happens all the time, you may want to investigate. Why are so many people choosing the competition? Why are they offering what that you aren't? How are they talking to them so they are more appealing? Now it could be price, convenience, brand expression, or product ease of use. It could be simply that they solve a different problem. And this is why it's important to know your competition, the problem they're solving and how they solve it. And we'll also discuss later why free isn't always the answer. The best customer insight I got was from an IT sales guy I used to work with. He told me that the reason why the competition won more deals was that the salespeople would tuck in their customers, give them hot cocoa, and read them a bedtime story. They connected to them emotionally, taking them out on outings, listening, and appealing to their needs and desires. They realized that the customers wanted to feel emotionally connected, not hear about the latest feature. The second reason, they don't understand their problem. Because you do this work every day, you probably understand every single issue regarding your product and the problem it solves. But your customers don't. They see their problem through their perspective and see few alternative solutions. As a marketer or salesperson, your job is to help customers understand the problem they are solving. If they don't connect to your message, they just won't continue interacting with you. Branding and marketing efforts can help you better communicate the problem, but first you need to understand your customer's perspective and how they see the problem, if they even see it. This means talking with them directly through interviews and focus groups for market research. But there's a great article over at Harvard Business Review, Know Your Customer's Jobs to Be Done. And this quote from the article sums this all up really well. What they really need to home in on is the progress that the customer is trying to make in a given circumstance, what the customer hopes to accomplish. This is what we've come to call the job to be done. This job to be done is the problem you solve. Number three, they don't understand the solution you're selling. If your customers don't understand your perspective of your problem, then most likely they won't understand how you approach solving it. Most people need help visualizing innovation in context of the familiar. So some people say, give the customer what they want. But that's not my approach. Our job is to figure out what they're going to want before they do. I think Henry Ford once said, if I'd asked customers what they wanted, they would have told me a faster horse. People don't know what they want until you show it to them. That's why I never rely on market research. Our task is to read things that are not yet on the page. Steve Jobs. Jeff Raskin, one of the most talented user interface designers, also believed this. To Raskin, there was no such thing as intuitive functionality. People related to interfaces through the familiar. People would ask him to design a new solution and then criticized him because it wasn't what they expected. He often noted that they didn't want something new, they wanted something that they recognized. And this leads me to one of my favorite stories about latches versus doorknobs. Now, my uncle told me that one of the major differences between Germany and the US was latches versus doorknobs. And I thought he was silly until a German friend of mine shared a story of when she was an exchange student new in the US and wanted to take a bath in her new host home. She had no idea how to lock a doorknob. Needless to say, she did not have a very relaxing bath. Now, the fourth reason is reprioritize the problem's urgency in the customer's life. If someone doesn't see the problem that they're experiencing as an impediment to their life, they won't solve it. We'll address this when we talk about some of Dr. Srini Pillay's insights. You may try to persuade them to see the problem otherwise, but this decision is really beyond your control. We like to think we can persuade people to buy from us, but in the end, we can't. People have many priorities occurring at once. It's rare that your solution to their problem will be at the top of their list. Number five, they're not ready to solve the problem. Buying a new product or solution means making a change. And if you aren't ready emotionally to make a change, you just won't do it. It really is that simple. You can't persuade someone to change. They'll only make an excuse as to why they won't and will probably claim it's money. And in reality, they just don't want the change yet. So here's an example. How many of you will place something in your shopping cart at a store site and not buy it right away? I know I'm notorious for leaving items in my cart for two to three days, especially if they are expensive items and I'm not yet ready to spend the money. And I know it's weird, but I'm sure I'm not the only person who does this. Customers lost interest. Our lives can be so busy and complicated that what was high priority one day may fall to the bottom the next. 
and you may be able to renew customer interest depending on how much they liked and valued your solution to start. So what made it fall? We don't know. And most likely a customer wouldn't tell us anyway, even if they consciously knew the reason. The customer probably forgot about it and got refocused on something else. We sometimes like to provide excuses for our customers, not based on data, but intuition and supposition, but we need to stay focused on the facts. And the fact is that they aren't interacting or buying. And if you ask me, lost interest is a great reason why customers don't interact with you. It makes it easy for you to take the opportunity to regain their interest.